Hey guys, happy Tuesday morning. Hopefully things are going great and uh, I hope that you got uh, the week off to a great start yesterday in Acts chapter 1. Let's open up to Acts chapter 2. Get your coffee ready. I'm going with a, a grande americano with cream this morning. Tommy has, he has persuaded me. I never thought I'd ever put uh, cream in my uh, my coffee or americanos again, but um, we're in Acts chapter 2. All right, here's what we're going to do. <coughs> I'm going to read through the whole chapter. This is a long chapter, so stay with me. And then what I'm looking for is whatever jumps off the page, okay? And that's going to be what I'm going to uh, look at and observe, talk about an application, and then a prayer, all right? Uh, let's pray, and then we will dive right in. God, thank you for today. And we ask, Father, that, that May 22nd would be an incredible day, that today we would see you at work, today that we would uh, love generously, that we would see people around us and that we would embody you. God, we ask this morning for your word to speak, for Acts chapter 2 to come alive, for it to instruct us and guide us. So God, speak to us now. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Here we go. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them uh, heard them speaking in his own language. Verse 7. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamanites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygra, and hmm, Pamphylia, I think, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and the glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Verse 29. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried in his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. 
Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and for your children, and all who are, for, are far off, um, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Verse 40. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. All right, here's the home stretch. Verse 42. They, they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship of the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of God. And this is one of, you know, kind of the crown jewels of all of the scripture. All of scripture is, is God breathed. We know this. Um, but chapter 2 of Acts, it, it stands out, doesn't it? I mean, many of us have, have read this chapter before. Different places within this chapter, there's so much going on within Acts 2. I'm not sure what stands out to you this morning as, as we read this. Chances are um, it could be a, a myriad of things, right? For me, here's what jumped off the page. Verse 33, exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. That's the part that jumped out, that it jumped right off the page. All right, so that's the scripture. I'm writing that down. That is S, right, of soap. This is the scripture that, that jumped out, verse 33. The observation is this. And it's really a question. When people are around me, well, let's just go with today, on Tuesday, right? When people will be around me today, what will they now see and hear? When I even think about last week, if I were to do an, an kind of a, a Holy Spirit audit from the last week, or, or let's just go from the last month, as people were in my presence, what did they now see and hear? And that is just, that is huge. I mean, just thinking about these early believers, and this is what, this is what Peter is getting at. He's saying, listen, the promised Holy Spirit that was poured out, he says, this is what people are now seeing and hearing. They are experiencing it by being in their presence. And I, you know, when I think about my life, when I think about today, there are so many different things that people could experience by being in my presence. They could, um, they could, uh, they could grow in their anxiety. They could grow in their hurry. They could grow in their fear. There's all kinds of things that people could could see by being around me. Equally, there's all kinds of things that people could hear. Uh, they could hear me, um, you know, use all kinds of language. They could hear me be verbally abusive to my wife or to my kids. Uh, they could hear me, um, you know, spread gossip about people at my church or about neighbors or whatever. They could hear all kinds of things. In my presence today, people could both see things and hear things. And here's my application for today for me. It's applying that when people are in my presence today on Tuesday, May 22nd, that they will both see and hear evidence that the Holy Spirit is indeed within me. And perhaps they, they don't put it into that language, but may they see and hear evidence that something is distinct about me, something is different about me. May that lead to questions. And in this context, 
when Peter was preaching, it was obvious that these people were different. It was obvious that something was going on. People were not only seeing the evidence of the Holy Spirit that now came to Jerusalem, but they also heard it. They also heard it. And that's my prayer today for me. I'm not sure what it is for you, but as people are in my presence today, that they would both see and hear that God is real, that his love is outrageous, that they would both see and hear that God has come, that he has poured his Holy Spirit into me, and that this would be a healing agent in their lives, that this would point them to Jesus. May Acts 2 be challenging, may it be convicting, may it be healing to you this morning. Let's live this out. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow morning.